Hey, I'm Braden, and I work on REI's how-to articles and videos. I'm a fast packer, which means I go out for long runs in the mountains carrying an overnight kit on my back. And to save weight and space in my pack, I cold soak my food, which is exactly what it sounds like and exactly as unpleasant as you'd expect. I've been on the lookout for a lightweight stove so I can have hot food in the backcountry. So today, I'm gonna make an alcohol fuel stove. Now I'm following some directions here that were written up by my friend Ashley, so I'll put a link to that in the description. But this is all the stuff that's gonna make up the stove. So I have two aluminum cans that I sanded down before I emptied them, and I emptied them last night, it was enjoyable. A penny, some high heat epoxy, some fiberglass pipe insulation, a little bit of metal mesh, a jar lid, this one came from peanut butter, and of course the alcohol fuel. When it comes to the tools I'm gonna to use, you don't have to remember all this, just check that link in the description. The first step is to cut the bottom inch and a half off of each can. There's a few ways you can go about this. I tried to make it a little easier on myself by screwing a razor blade to a one and a half inch block of wood and then just securing that piece of wood to the workbench. And now I'm gonna take the can and just roll it around the blade to score the bottom of the can. Now we just need to press down right above that score line to separate the two halves. There you go, one down, two down. Now that we have the two pieces ready, I'm gonna decide which one's the top and which one's the bottom. This is gonna be the bottom piece, so I'm gonna take my fiberglass insulation and just pop it in there. Now the whole point of this insulation is to act as a wick for the alcohol fuel. Next we have to drill the burner holes where the flames come out. And the trick here is to get the holes evenly spaced. And the way we're gonna do that is with this piece of paper. So first we're gonna trace the bottom of the can. Then we're gonna cut out that circle. And fold the circle in half four times. Then unfold it and mark the edge of each fold. Now we just mark the can at each fold and drill out each mark with the 1 16th bit. That's the smaller one. Okay, now we gotta make the fuel port in the top and that's where you're gonna pour in the fuel. So take your penny, drop it in the middle, and trace it. Now mark the center and four dots around the center but still in the circle. Since I still have my smaller bit in, I'll use that first and drill out the small holes on the outside and then use the thicker bit in the middle. Okay, so the last thing to do with this top piece is to make it a little easier to fit into the bottom piece. And the way we're gonna do that is just by taking our pliers and crimping all along the bottom edge. So that's gonna nestle in nicely. The last thing to do here is to epoxy it all together. So I'm gonna take them apart and just mix up my epoxy. And all epoxies are different, so just follow the directions on the package. All right, that should be good. So now I'm just gonna take my top piece and put a bead of epoxy all around the top edge, nestle them together, I'm just gonna clean up this bead a little bit. All right, so there it is. I'm just gonna set this aside to cure for a day, uh, and then I'll sand it down and smooth it out. The last thing I can do today before the epoxy cures is to make my pot stand. So I cut this piece of metal mesh to two and a half inches tall and 17 inches long, but it turns out that for my pot, that's a little too long. So I remeasured it and tightened it down. It turns out the right size for my pot is about 13 inches. But here's the fancy part. On one edge, I'm gonna make a couple metal hooks to keep everything together. To make these hooks, I cut off two squares worth of wire, but left these two longer ones. And then I just bent them back with my pliers into the shape of hooks. And it works pretty well, as you can see. All right, it's been a day, so my epoxy is cured and I've sanded it down. So now we just get to test out the stove. I'm not gonna light it inside, so before I go, I have an ounce of alcohol fuel that I'm gonna add through the fuel port. Then I'm gonna take my penny and cover up the fuel port and add a splash more fuel on top of that. And then another little bit of fuel into the lid. The fuel on the penny and in the lid just help prime the stove. Once it's going, I'll put my pot on top and see how long it takes to boil. All right, it worked. So uh, I have a few specs to share with you. So the stove, the lid, the penny, and the pot stand together all weigh one and five eighths ounces, which is pretty good. It burned through an ounce of fuel in just about 10 minutes, and then I had to add a little bit more fuel to get to a full rolling boil. So I'd say just over an ounce and probably about 12 minutes to get everything to a full rolling boil. I also learned something about pennies today. So this is a 1980 copper penny, 
And this used to be a 19 or a 2016 zinc penny. So it turns out that pennies made after 1982 were made primarily of zinc. And this basically welded to the stove and I had to break it off. So make sure you use a penny that was made before 1982. But other than that, we're done. So if you have any ideas for other videos, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.